have some we, we have some people ryan that have literally left two three four hundred k a year in corporate to really yeah. build their own business so i want to share something from angelo who's doing well he says i'm seven months into my business full-time he says he has superman syndrome where he feels like he has to do all of it on his own he can't yeah. afford to pay for a certain consistent help couple questions how do you find the right people that are willing yeah. to prove themselves first yeah. and he feels like this whole business in his nature he's not fully sure about yeah and he doesn't know like what the next steps are what would you do yeah. if that was kind of your situation so one seven months congratulations two one of my mentors taught me something and it was odd to me because i used to have a, a an hourly wage mindset so i used to think to myself well i make 50 uh, i make six bucks an hour uh, or I make 10 bucks an hour or 20. And one of my mentors told me, Ryan, you as an owner should have the least pay in the company because leaders eat last. So I would always hire people and it was weird because I would be like starving and I'd be making like 2000 a month and, you know, and, and, and drinking Folgers coffee as opposed to Starbucks. And I'd be paying a person 200 grand a year. And like, I'm making 30, right? And I own the company. But if you have people that are smarter than you, that are making more money than you, eventually your equity will be worth more. So, you know, some of the best hires I've ever had in my life were when I persuaded a grown adult to come, you know, leave a big time executive position at a major company to come work for this, you know, uh, uh, this, at that time, this young kid. I remember they'd sit in my office. One guy was the CEO of a publicly traded company and he would tell me how to be a better CEO and tell me about my blind spots. And I still, you know, I still value and covet that I had people better than me around me. And those people have gone on to lead some big companies. So aim high, get people better than you. If you can't afford to pay them cash, give them equity. That's a whole different way to look at business too, because most people just think in terms of wage and dollars. Um, is there, is there a process you go through or was it more based on that current timing of your business or your gut yeah. about what percentage to pay? Cause I know people ask me that too. You know about the story about that Uber driver, the first Uber driver who replied to the, the tweet and he's worth like $2 billion cause they gave him equity and he was an Uber driver, right? Or the guy who spray, spray painted in the Facebook head, you know, the home office, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like he graffitied this Facebook home office he didn't charge the two grand he normally would have, and he made 250 million bucks for a $2,000, you know, graffiti job at the Facebook headquarters. Those stories out there exist, and you know, and 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 everybody who's ever become a significant success multi-billionaire has made a lot of people wealthy along the way. Now there are some people that are more greedy, that are more controlling, that don't want to give up a single share in their company. I understand that mindset too. I've never had that mindset because I don't want to do all the work. I, I, uh, I hate doing certain things. and I suck at doing a lot of things. And so I will not attract the right people to come help me if I don't give them a piece of the upside. And I don't want to have a bunch of people that I'm constantly have to, having to babysit because I'm you know, paying them cheap wages. My stepdad used to do that. It drive me crazy. Like he could afford to hire the best accountants. They hired the cheapest and then they'd embezzle from them or they'd quit, or they'd make bad financial decisions that cost them hundreds of thousands. And I would always be like, why don't you just hire somebody and pay him you know, 500 grand a year and not have to worry about this stuff? And he never agreed with me on that subject. And so I took the exact opposite approach of him. I share the wealth and I try to get the best people and I try to pay the highest wages in the marketplace uh, and give the most opportunity and upside. But as a startup, that's not easy to do. So you have to run a process. Huge, that, that's huge. So you get, yeah. you get into business, and you you have the right team now a lot of people are asking uh when they're going from just maybe six to seven figures or when they want to build the brand awareness and credibility yeah. what are the skills like the survivor skills that you offer startups in the health and wellness industry yeah. or in general we have yeah. a lot of people that are wanting to expand their company awareness and attract the right people to their business can you think of those two or three like yeah. must have skills that entrepreneurs need in this new economy you know, the, uh, the, the skills that you have to have right now to be a successful entrepreneur, number one, you have to be coachable, right? Because, you know, the world is changing so fast. If you think you know it all, you're crazy. You know, you can't be a know-it-all. You have to be coachable. Uh, you, you have to be, have gratitude, right? You know, you have to dream big, or like have huge dreams, you know, daydream about you being a multi-billionaire and flying on a private jet or you know, or, or, or getting the Ursa Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award or speaking, you know, like I just did recently at the Boys and Girls Club or, you know, selling out an arena, you know, all that stuff. I just dreamed about it all day long, constantly. 
uh, you know, obsessed about it. Woke up in the middle of the night, uh, could, you know, so you have to be obsessed about it these days. You have to love your business and what you want to do and be passionate about it. Because if you don't, you know, you're not going to be successful at it because there's just a lot of disruptors out there looking to disrupt industries, specifically those with entrepreneurs that aren't passionate about the service to the products that they provide. So you got to be passionate. You got to, you got to be a savage too these days. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times people are soft. And when I deal with young entrepreneurs, uh, sometimes, you know, it's like shooting a rabbit with a cannon. You know, if you're not tough, man, you won't survive. Like Mark Zuckerberg is tough. You know, Evan at Snapchat is tough. Tony Shea, these guys are tough. Bill Gates is a monster. He looks all nice and like, you know, all, all cute and fluffy. When he was young, this guy was incredibly competent, co competitive. He would get red in the face and freak out and scream at people. And, and I know that because I know some of his co-founders. I know people that, you know, are founders of other companies and so forth. So you got to just, you got to figure out, you know, how to win and how to be competitive and who you're up against. And then most important, your competitiveness should be channeled not toward, you know, your competition. Your competitiveness should be channeled toward you. And the very fact that you're going to create so much value or do such a good job that there will be no competition. Right. As opposed to, and I've made this mistake, targeting the competition or focusing on them. And then you're not turning it internal. You know, you're not focusing on your product or service and you getting better. You're focused on the competition, which is, you know, something I've learned the hard way not to do. So I think I've given a lot of attributes about the subject. Not all entrepreneurs have the same exact attributes, but you know, it's not about, it's not about resources. It's about resourcefulness. You know, Tony Robbins taught me that, um, you have to surround yourself with great people, be a, be a student. Yeah, yeah. Listen to guys like Peter uh, and follow their lead. You know, he if he's built a process and he's created a system, buy it. I, I you know, I've bought more seminars, more books. You know, I've gone to seminars where I paid five thousand dollars, showed up for a day, realized it was like a two day seminar. Realized that I could only receive, and I only had the capacity to take one idea away that day, and I left and didn't go back to the second day. Bought another ticket for five thousand just for the second day a year later, because I did I could you know what I mean because I wanted to be a student I wanted to learn but I couldn't absorb it all at once so I guess the last thing is you got to learn and then you got to apply and then you got to modify and test and tweak and then learn and then apply. And so